got the word on that 307 tonight, Captain. Oh, that's the mugging on 35th? Yes, sir. Only now it's a homicide. Well, what's the story? We got a pretty good make on two probables. Well, that's a break. Good descriptions? For a change. Right down to the color of their eyes. What's with the case here? Just coming to that. Looks like the thing started like a routine mugging. Bruises on the victim's neck and all like that. Wallet missing. What went wrong? The case was chained to the victim's wrist. You know, the way jewelry salesmen do. Yeah. What the lab and photo put together is they tried to shoot the chain off, and the ricochet drill set victim right through the head. Anything interesting in here? Nothing but business papers. The victim was in the import-export business. Nothing but business papers until we checked the lining. Then this. Uh-oh. Looks like we got a federal case here, man. Attention of the police and federal agencies called into the case, Shift Tech Company, source of the photocopied memorandum. You're absolutely positive, Bob. No carbon. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Good luck at the meeting. Right. Bye. Ray, I'm really stumped. It's utterly fantastic. You checked my uh, file safe yourself. Yes, sir. It hasn't been tampered with in any way, and the original memo's still there. And you and I are the only two people in the plant with a combination. That's right, sir. Then how the devil did someone get a chance to take a photograph of the original? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out, Mr. Silliman. Ray, I'll tell you precisely what happened the day Bob wrote me that memo. He wrote it with his own hand. Now, you heard him on the phone. No copies. He came up here, handed it to me with a wink, and left. I read it, jumped for joy, then put it in the file safe myself, and it's been there ever since. But somewhere along the line, a copy was made. By me? By Bob? To what purpose? Why make a copy of something that only he and I were aware of? Just doesn't make sense. I sound like a broken record, but the fact remains a photocopy was made. And this thing's beginning to smell of espionage. But that's incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. Incredible? Absolutely unbelievable? Why then the frequent headlines announcing the exposure of this or that spy? Sometimes native born, sometimes a foreigner. What is really incredible is that the public media, magazines, newspapers, broadcasting, reveal 85% of what an enemy might want to know. If the hostile power wants to dig out the information, and the hostile power does, along with a firm determination to get that last 15% too. That part of our defense story not handed out on a silver platter. Here is where there enters the picture that melodramatic figure the spy or espionage agent, and the tools of his profession. Simple lock picks, portable x-ray machines, an almost limitless variety of microphones, recorders, transmitters, and receivers. Complex yet tiny, the development of the transistor and micro-miniaturization have worked wonders. A newly developed shotgun mic was to figure importantly in the gyrotech case. Want to eavesdrop on somebody, attach a small hidden device and the telephone caller will have an audience he never suspected. Or take the area of photography, motion pictures, still camera, infrared, and micro photography. All available and some small enough to lose inside a pack of cigarettes. You can buy a telescope today that will let you count the freckles on someone's neck a mile or so away. Freckle counting is not the name of the game called espionage, however. Our purpose here, in this case illustration, a composite of several actual security violations, is to make you aware of the improbable, unbelievable devices that can be used against your company and you. 
But that's incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. First step when the unauthorized photocopy was discovered. Comparison with the original Gyrotech memorandum. The handwriting on the copy was strangely elongated, as though the picture had been taken at an angle. Using an instrument known as the autofocus rectifier, government technicians can, in effect, flatten out the photocopy. The difference allows the expert to calculate the angle of the original line of sight. Investigators were now able to establish the vantage point from which the photograph was made. A newly established import-export office across the street from Gyrotech. The subleased office was now vacated. The federal security investigators made an inch-by-inch inch analysis of the premises. Tests were conducted using a telescopic lens known as the Questar. At this distance and position from the Gyrotech plant, it was as though much of what went on inside Gyrotech was exposed to view, a close-up view. With a camera attachment, agents could photograph even the smallest details in a blueprint or document right through the window of the president's office. With this to go on, federal investigators now narrowed their search to the previous renters of the office space. The trail led to the uncovering of a spy ring financed by a foreign power. Boyd Johnson, American-born, a recently hired electrician, employed by Gyrotech. And Mikhail Tarazic, ostensibly a refugee from Hungary, actually of Albanian origin. In the months prior to the discovery of the spy ring, they had not only used telescopic photography, but had managed to compromise the secrets of the Gyrotech company in a number of other ways. By using a shotgun microphone across a heavily trafficked boulevard, they were able to aim and pick out individual voices, even in a crowded area. Out in the open conversations of Gyrotech's top scientists and engineers were monitored and recorded. The Gyrotech company had a number of basic research contracts with the state university. Consequently, activities on the campus were of interest to the pair of espionage agents, particularly what went on inside the physics building. One day, there was a visit from a telephone repairman, or, more accurately, a man who represented himself as a telephone repairman. It had been an easy matter to interfere with the telephone drop line outside the building to create a genuine disturbance. It was an easy matter to gain entry to where he wanted to go, too. A busy secretary was in no mood to check his credentials. She was delighted to be rid of him so she could get on with her work. Mikhail Tarazic must have felt the same way as he proceeded to, quote, repair, unquote, the professor's line. It was a matter of a few minutes, and the job was done. Satisfying himself that the secretary was not the curious type, Tarazic quickly turned to his next task, wiring the professor's chair for sound. The tiny transmitter running on power cells would have an active life of several months and could transmit over a range of a half a mile or more. Only another year to your doctorate, Carson. Yes, sir. And now that Dr. Peabody's retired, you'd like to work with me? Very much so, sir. Laser is your specialty, huh? Electron injector lasers, sir. What were you and Peabody using chiefly? Sometimes uh, indium antinamide, mostly gallium arsenide. And what was your biggest problem? The cryogenic factor. If only... Uh, suppose I told you I found a way to lick the problem. No more sub-sub-zero temperatures. We've worked out a method, I believe... And so, the good professor continued to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings. 
Yes. And sometimes of masers and lasers, too. Transmitted to a receiver and voice-activated recorder in the possession of Johnson and Tarazic. <laughs> uh, as we go along... Early one morning at Gyrotech, where Johnson was employed as the building electrician. On this particular day, a carefully worked out plan took shape. Who better to call about the lighting failure than the building electrician? The foreman assigned the job to Johnson. It was a restricted area where secret work was performed. Johnson, having only a company confidential clearance, was escorted to prevent his access to secret information. So far, everything according to the book. The escort was close at hand. Nearby drafting tables were covered so there would be no violation of security. But for some reason or another, the job did not go as fast as was expected. For every bug or wrinkle uncovered by Johnson, another cropped up. The job would take a couple of days, and so it went. When he entered the second time, then the third, Johnson was an accepted figure in the drafting room. The escort and personnel in the area were a lot more casual now. Why not break away for a smoke now and then? No longer were the drafting tables covered in the area where Johnson worked. Because he was there, everybody assumed he was supposed to be there and didn't give Johnson's presence a second thought. Under hobbies on his job application form, Johnson had listed only one word, fishing, which was quite honest of Mr. Johnson. Unfortunately, no one had sought to find out if Mr. Johnson was also a highly trained photographer. What appeared to be an ordinary screwdriver contained a small camera. Within seconds, he had a photographic record of plans and specifications that had taken months, even years, to develop. All reduced to tiny microfilm dots which would be mailed to a drop point in Central Europe. As a journeyman electrician, Johnson was able to accomplish several other jobs, such as using a spike mic and miniature transmitter to record conversations in the adjacent management conference room. One day, a photocopier broke down due to electrical failure. Johnson was summoned. He had the chance to install an automatic miniature camera. Now it would be one copy for the company, one for Johnson's foreign employers. The final assault of Johnson and Tarazic one night. By bypassing the alarm system and picking a lock, they were able to gain access into the plant. Periodically, the guard made his rounds through the premises. They came well equipped for the job. The basic instrument, an x-ray device. The files of the engineering project supervisor had been properly secured. Johnson held the negative x-ray plate against the locking mechanism, while Tarazic went around to the rear of the file with the radioactive element. Radioactive impulses transmitted through the cabinet and the locking device would serve to identify the location of the disks within the locking mechanism. 
it was a quick matter to develop the x-rays. And an expert like Terezic now knew the combination. No noise, nothing for a guard to become curious about. Classified files of the engineering project supervisor, carefully replaced by the two men, would make interesting for the intelligence agency of a foreign power. And the next morning, the supervisor would not have a clue that his classified file had been rifled. A conscientious guard but he should have checked the area in which the secret material was stored. The Gyrotech case history represents a composite picture of security violations within a single plant, but each one of these illustrations is based on fact. The trained professional agents like Johnson and Terezic have many sophisticated tools against which there is one overriding answer vigilance, such as using the latest GSA-approved security containers, which protect against the X-ray technique used by Johnson and Terezic. Open your mind to this basic truth. Half measures are worse than nothing. Security must be all the way. Half measures allow Johnson to doctor the photocopying machine. All the way means allowing access only to fully authorized servicemen. Half measures allowed the illicit photographing of the work of many key draftsmen. All the way would have meant an escort all the time in the restricted area and classified material covered. Terezic's style of telephone repair would have been frustrated if more than a quick look had been taken at his company identification card. Just being aware of the sensitivity of long-distance microphones, even out of doors, will cut the chances of eavesdroppers greatly. When you are vulnerable to eavesdropping, that's the time for small talk, not shop talk. A high-powered telephoto lens can pry into your private affairs, but it often can be stopped by vigilance and common sense. A drawn blind, for example, would have ended this case history before it began. If you are working in a defense-related area, your plant must be a strong island of vigilance amid the potential security threats on every side. So, smile or not, but remember, someday, somewhere, you too may be on a kind of candid camera, on the spot in our nation's defense against the spy.